This video is a part summary of the work done to date on the label. I'm going to look at how text in the label can be altered using two approaches. One uses the set method and the other uses the key value pairs approach. Let's consider this computer program and let's have a quick overview of it. Here you can see I'm creating an instance of a window. Here I'm creating an instance of a string variable. This creates a label. Likewise, this creates a label. And you can see that here we are packing both labels. And I'll come on to what this does in a moment. We've seen it in a previous video, but I wish to do a comparison here with respect to two ways in which you can change the content of the text within a label. Let's consider this label first and the first thing we can say about it is I'm passing in this which is the window that was created here. This is telling label 1 that it's going to be associated with my window. This line, well this is going to ensure that the border of the label can be seen. There's going to be a line around the border. This is setting the font and this is setting the text of the label to hello world. And this is an example of a key value pair where this is the key and this is the value associated with that key and all of these are referred to as named arguments. So at the moment of creation this label's text will be displaying hello world so in other words we're setting up the text in the label at the moment of its creation Whereas for this label, you can see if you look at these named arguments, there is no text equals anything. Instead, on this label, we have this line. And what's happening, here we have the word text variable, and it's being assigned var1, where var1 is the string variable that was created on this line. And this key value pair links this label to this variable. If we now consider this line of code, we can see it is a message. It is a message to this object that's going to invoke this method. Now, of course, this object is the string variable that was created on this line. And this method is a method of the object created on this line. And we can see it is the set method and it's taking with it high. Now, what this will do, it'll alter the content of this variable here and this variable when it was created here had nothing in it. Now because this variable is tied to this label because of this line here, any change to the variable is reflected in this label. So this message is changing the variable to high and the label will reflect this and display high. So when this program executes, what we're going to see at the runtime is this. And if you look at the first label, you can see it is saying hello world. And that is hello world because of what we did here when we created the instance of the label. If you look at this label, it displays high. Now that high appeared there because of this message. It didn't appear when we created the instance of the label here. It occurred when this message was sent. Of course, labels on a graphical user interface would typically show the name of the company that the software belongs to. So in that case, you would use this. Of course, other things a label can do is to display results of calculations that take place within a computer program. And in that instance, this is how you would set up your label. You would make sure that it was linked to some variable such that you could set it when the calculation for your program had been complete and you wanted to show the user the result of the calculation. Let's consider this computer program. And again, you can see I'm creating a window. I'm creating an instance for a string variable. And here I'm creating a label. And if you look at the options, you can see that I'm not setting this to any text value. Whereas if I look at label two, I'm again not setting this to any text value, but I am doing this. I am making text variable assigned var underscore one. So this label is linked to this string as we've just discussed already in this video. And then of course I'm packing both of the labels so that they will appear on the window. Of course earlier in this playlist you will have learned that a label can be considered as having key value pairs. If I consider this label for example and look at this, the relief is the key and solid is the value. If I look at this, font is the key and times 22 bold 
is the value. And if I wanted to get at anything else associated with label 1 that doesn't appear here, text for example, I can do so by regarding text as the key and assigning to that key a value that will then be displayed in the label. And on this line you can see that's precisely what I have done. I've chosen label 1 and in square brackets I've put the word text in quotes now that's the key and I'm assigning to that this value and I'm just saying text put here using key value pairs approach just so that when we see the program you can see what this line actually did to a label and of course what this line is doing it's going to set this label using the set method so we can see there are two ways in which we can change a label's content at runtime. So in other words, you can use either of these to output calculations that your program has made to the label to display the results of the processing within your program. Now the question is, which should you use? Well, it's up to you. Both will work. But it's usually the case that most people use this approach where they use the set method. And when you build graphical user interfaces, one of the things you need to bear in mind, it's just a window to your program. Most of the coding goes on behind the scenes. A graphical user interface, in truth, is nothing more than a mechanism to allow you to input data to your program, which is then processed, and then the results of that data is pushed back to the graphical user interface. I think when most people start programming, they think programming is the graphical user interface, but that is only the window onto the main processing that takes place away from the graphical user interface. So a good view to have of code is your graphical user interface is the mechanism that allows input to your code to be processed, and it is then something that's very useful for showing the results of that processing. So graphical user interface you can think of as an input and output device to your code that's behind the scenes if you like of the graphical user interface. So using this approach here is possibly a better way simply because what you're using is a variable. So your code goes and does all its calculations it stores the result in a variable and then you set this variable which is connected to the graphical user interface and you would put in the bracket here where I've got this daft string at the moment. You would put in the name of the variable that held the results of the processes that you've carried out with your code. So let's see this program executing and this is the runtime and if you look at label 1 you can see in it there is the text text put here using key value pairs approach and look at the code and that was achieved with this line of code which used the key and the value arrangement. If you look at the label content here it says using text variable and string var. Now that means it actually uses the set method as you can see on this line. There's the variable var1 that was declared here. This is the set method and if you look at the set method you can see in brackets we have that string that is displayed here in the label. So there's two approaches and as I've already said this is the one that tends to be used. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.